Hey guys, JR again. Uh, another video. Uh, this time I'm going to have a look through my horror stuff at the moment. Um, I sort of tend to not do much horror stuff because I do. I get more DVDs than anything, whereas my comics and toy, well, my my toys and statues are more related to comics. Uh, but I thought I'd just do a little bit of a rundown of my favourite horror magazine brands of all time. Now, I've been a magazine collector for far too long and I've got boxes and boxes and boxes of various horror magazines. Um, and uh, I've been collecting horror... I was, prob I was a horror kid. Um, I probably saw my first horror film age three or four um, at the drive-in. Uh, and so if I, if I accurately think of three or four as being how long I've been a horror fan, that's 40 odd years. Because as you can tell by the grey in my beard, I'm an old dude. Um, now, I've decided just to go through the titles that, that I've always really liked, the ones that I kept going back to. Uh, there was I, I've collected hundreds of horror mags over the year. Whenever Sci-Fi Now and some of those English mags do specials, like their Zombie A to Z and things like that, I generally grab those. Uh, I've also, over the years, from the great shop that used to be in Sydney called Land Beyond Beyond, I picked up things like Sam Hain, which was a pretty cool independent English one. Um, there was... Uh, man, I can't even think of the Film Facts, which was good. I still pick up Cinefix now and again. Femme Fatales, which was an amazing horror and sci-fi and exploitation mag, really sort of aimed its focus on the women in movies. Um, and then from that came, uh, I think it was John Russo from Night of the Living Dead. He had his Screen Queens Illustrated, which was half uh, Femme Fatales and half... Um, half femme fatales and half playboys so it kind of had uh, naked photo shoots of some of the b grade some of the b grade some of the b movie actresses not b grade they're not these girls aren't b grade I, I love those sorts of movies so i shouldn't call them b grade they're from b movies there's a different there's a completely different thing uh and then another one of those which was kind of a little bit more underground was draculina um i didn't mind that um, I only picked up issues when they interested me. I didn't get every single one like I did with Femme Fatales and stuff like that. Um, but this is my top five favourite horror mags of all time. Plus a special mention because there was two that I have been like this, sort of weighing up for an hour longer as to which one uh, I prefer. Uh, one that's been around for a long time and the other one which is a little bit more recent. So I'm going to start with my special mention. The special mention goes to the dark side. Uh, this is issue 178. It's been around for a long time. It's UK produced. Um, I, I like this magazine. It, it's sort of copped a bit of flack over the years, but I, I like this magazine because of how much they go into uh, some of the Italian stuff um, and, and other Euro horror. Um, and they review a lot of the um, cult, uh, sorry, the 88 films and Shameless Screen Entertainment and Arrow video stuff, which is cool for me because that, that's where I get a lot of my horror from, is from Amazon via those ones. So, as you can see, you know, like they've got Enigma there. So, they really go into, into that sort of thing. I like this magazine, but it's not one of my top five of all time. I don't necessarily get every issue of it. I don't sweat on every issue of this like I do with some of these other ones. So... That's honourable mention, goes to the dark side. Now, my number five is a magazine called Horror Hound. This is a US produced magazine. Uh, it's interesting, uh, because I've always collected statues and things like that, this is cool because it's almost like a catalogue of toys and comics and stuff. So, uh, every month they'll pick a subject. This one, it was Elvira. And there was a retrospective of everything that came out that was Elvira related. So comics, toys, whatever, movies, everything that came out that had Elvira on it, they do like an overview of all of that sort of collection. So it's like, if you're a collector of that sort of thing, you can really sit down and go, oh, right, okay, well, I've got that thing in my collection, but not that. And in the past, they've done a Ghostbusters issue. Um, they really pick one. They might have done a Walking Dead one, I think. can't remember. 
Um, but they really nailed down, they, they pick one thing and do a full overview of everything that came out. They look at old VHS, um, they, uh, they do games and stuff like that, real nice cross, what's coming soon and things like that. Um, yeah, so Horror Hound, my number five. Um, I will just point out at this point that because some of these magazines are out of print, I've just picked a random one from my collection. Um, so that Horror Hound's probably within, that's what, within the last six months, September, October. So I haven't necessarily got the latest issues here of some of these, just because I just wanted to pick something just random out of the collection. Now, good old Fangoria, which used to be huge, unfortunately is only online now. Uh, they did a couple of sister mags in the mid to late 80s and early 90s. And one of those was Gorezone. Gorezone was a sister mag to, uh, to Fango. It only lasted a little while. They did try to bring it back a couple of years ago, maybe two or three years ago. Always, always loved this one because this was... Whereas Fangoria told the stories of what was happening in the movies and things like that, this was just, here's the blood and guts. Here's how he did it. Here's the snot. Here's the whatever, the slime. Here's all of that sort of stuff. And um, it was just such a different take on uh, on whether on what was happening. Um, so this has got the, the Laughing Dead. Like people have probably a lot of people have probably never even heard of the Laughing Dead. The reason I selected this issue, the Dead Pit. I love the movie The Dead Pit, um, and I had to slide this issue out just because it said that on the cover. It's a daft reason I know, but that is my number four, Gore Zone. I wish that um, Fangoria would go back into normal publication and actually. Uh, bring back Gore Zone as part of their regular mags. My next one, after Gore Zone, of course, Fangoria. I collected Fangoria from the mid eighties until probably until the last issue. Um, I might be short the last couple, but this was, this was my Bible for so long. It really was. Um, I graduated from a previous magazine, which is going to be my number two, Fangoria being my number three. I graduated from a previous magazine that I used to get as a little kid, and th this was my Bible. I, whenever I went to the city, I would go like into Sydney, the city of Sydney. I'd go again to Land Beyond Beyond. I'd go to Comic Kingdom. I'd go to there was a secondhand bookshop on George Street, and I used to go through there, and they had piles of back issues of Fangoria, and I'd take a little list with me. And I'd go through and I'd find which ones I didn't have. Um, and I think I almost had a complete collection. But man, Fang Fangoria, read cover to cover every month without fail. This this was... If it wasn't for these other two having... One being a current one and the other being for completely nostalgic reasons, this would be my number one. Fangoria was the horror mag. Uh, loved it. Still love it. Still go back and dig issues up and, and have a look through them. That was, um, you know, introduced me to people like everybody from Lucio Fulci to Chaz Balin to Tom Savini. All of the names that I have found to be fuel for the fire of my love of horror. They all came from Fango. They, they all came from reading this magazine. Um, so that's my number three. It's Fangoria. Um, next... This was the magazine that, outside of cinema, introduced me to horror. So, they used to have like a horror movie. And when I say horror movie, I mean like a 40s or 50s sci-fi film on Saturday afternoons on Channel 7 when I was a kid. And because I was dropped off at my grandparents' place, I tended to sit down and watch like a like a, a Three Stooges or a, a Martin and Lewis film. And then there was usually an episode of Star Trek, a couple of cartoons, and one of those 60s... 50s, 60s sci-fi films. Um, Famous Monsters of Filmland from uh, Forrest J. Ackerman made this. It was really a, a love project of him. Forrest Ackerman is someone who I've admired for years. And possibly the only reason that I, I have the to watch pile um, and started reviewing movies. I started reviewing horror movies 15 years ago. This is where it started. So... Like, Fangoria introduced me, like I said, to the fuel to the fire that maintained it with Fulci and all of those guys. 
this was the wood and the box of matches that started it. I Every time I got an issue of this, everything that Forry said was gospel. Every movie that I saw stills of, like you can see on the back here, everything was just like the most important thing to me was to get was to get my famous monsters of film land. And you know, every now and again, the, it'll come back and there'll be 20 or 30 or 40 issues. But even the current ones don't match how good these old ones were. They were all black and white. There was no color in them. They didn't just cover horror. I've got a Doctor Who issue somewhere because the the monsters of the Tom Baker era of Doctor Who were, were so terrifying and so so much influenced by by movies from the 50s and 60s that you really couldn't ignore them. I mean, Doctor Who and the Seeds of Doom, for example, that's that's absolutely perfect Doctor Who right there. And the and the guys that do it now, I, I still like Doctor Who, but the guys that do it now have lost some of those core things that made Doctor Who Doctor Who. And Seeds of Doom was like Doctor Who versus the 19... 50s, 40s or 50s thing from outer space. Um, and there was things in that that you look at John Carpenter's remake of the thing and, and he used, perhaps unintentionally or maybe he never saw it, but there was elements in that that I could see in the Seeds of Doom and, um, and for, for Ackerman in the 70s to cover a UK TV show was that wasn't getting much publicity on in, in the States. That was amazing. Um, I mean, you go into the 80s and there was started to be Doctor Who conventions and stuff like that. But really in the 70s, he was the one that was starting to show that sort of stuff. A Ackerman was an amazing, like a, a fun journalist, like like in the, in, in sort of the way that Stan Lee was fun, you know, well, is fun. Um, sorry, Stan. Um, there's a real joy in what he does, and I, I just admire that so much. There was never any cynicism into their work. It was always, yeah, horror movies, woo, just like Stan's always, Marvel, Marvel, Marvel. Like There's just like a real drive to, to, to show the love of the subject matter. Um, I guess Hugh Hefner's another good example of that as well. I mean, he's um, uh, what he did as far as adult magazines are concerned like like playboy was another thing there was such a driving force of passion in that um and possibly a nice way to meet hot chicks anyway um not sure how many hot chicks forry may have met but famous monsters um if you can find a single issue of famous monsters anywhere for a cheap price just pick it up and flick through it and you might find something that's an old black and white film that you've never you've never entertained the idea of looking at um, famous monsters. A lot of nostalgia in that. Like that. That's really why I'm a monster kid. Still, you know. And now the last one. Uh, this magazine I was introduced to in the early 2000s, maybe I don't know, maybe 2003, 2004. Um, I was via this. I've been introduced to to so many alternatives to. To just modern Western horror, um, and not just that, music and video games. Like, if the reason if Fangoria stopped because of another Megan, another magazine's um, surge in popularity, it's this one that my my new Bible, the New Testament to Fangoria's Old Testament, Rue Morgue. Um, constantly impressed by this magazine. Um, it's beautiful and glossy. Uh, heaps of heaps of info in it. Uh, they don't just cover. Like they, not only just they don't just review horror movies. They also review toys and books and stuff like that. They do articles about it. Like I mean, the, the reason I picked this issue: the history of horror hip hop. Like I don't think at this point I'd even heard of horror hip hop. Um, Maybe I shouldn't have. I don't know. But um, this is a Canadian magazine. Um, and, and I just... I still... Every issue comes out. And the first thing I do is like, could everybody just give me a half an hour of silence? And I go through it page by page. It's got... So some of the cool things about it is... Um, there's this great... Set, weird facts and morbid stats where they just... Uh, Monica Kubler, I think it is. Yeah, Monica S. Kubler. I'm not sure if she's still doing it. I should check that. This is a 
issue from 2006, um, just finds this weird ass stuff. Um, here you go. Due to Zombie 2's ultra low budget, many of the zombie extras were in fact drunks and itinerant people. You know, like just weird, just weird facts like that. And they're not always, um, they're not always about horror movies and things like that. Humans can only survive approximately 10 days without sleep. You now know that. Why do you know that? Because of my number one favourite horror movie magazine. But yeah, and so not, not only does this sort of go into those things, video games, um, like I said, there's books, but albums. And when I say albums, I don't just mean like it's got a review here for the Hills Have Eyes soundtrack. There's also... Um, the band the matadors their horribly 9000 album so they actually people that use like you know like the misfits and horror pops and maybe creep show who have that that psychobilly sound or that lean more in towards the horror style of their look or whatever alice coopery sort of marilyn mancy sort of leaning into that part of of heavy metal they they cover everything that's if it's covered in blood or cuts its own throat basically um Rue Morg at some time have covered it and they just go through everything and if you manage to find a copy of this you should grab it because it's a great read I mean don't, not this particular issue but any issue um, I also think that Horror Block the subscribing box where you get toys and stuff like that uh, t-shirts and things every one of those comes with an issue of Rue Morg and like, like I said my new bible I want to know what's coming out I do this. I bought a copy of The Neon Demon this week, and I'm pretty sure that I read about that first in here. Um, but yeah, uh, Rue Morgue's just great stuff. And, and unfortunately, they've reduced to... They were 10 issues a year. They've just recently reduced to 6 issues a year, which is a bummer. Um, yeah, but that gives you more time to read stuff on the To Watch Path. Uh, speaking of which, um, that's my top five plus a, a bonus extra look at one of my favourite mags. These are these are mags that I revisit all the time. Um, that's why I keep them rather than get rid of them because there's just so much information in them. I'll, I'll probably catalogue them at some point with a list of articles and who's there so I can find so I can do my research for articles that I do more easy. Um, but yeah. Uh, you can easily pick any of those mags up and get something out of them, something great out of them. Uh, so yeah, so anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for um, enduring the dulcet tones of my voice for as long as you have. Um, don't forget, make sure that you uh, like this, um, this video. Please subscribe. I try to do these as often as I can. The more you guys like them, the more I'll do. Um, and don't forget, visit to watchpile.com. In between your issues of Rue Morgue, your every, your every two month issue of Rue Morgue, go to the To Watch Pile. I've got two reviews going up every week. I do a roundup of all of the stuff that I've bought that week at the end of the week. Um, occasionally a comic review, and uh, yeah, it would be really nice to have you read. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I shall see you on the next video. Bye.